Well, oh my fucking god, guys. Uh, I believe this is the third official Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice trailer, which premiered on Jimmy Kimmel Live just uh, yesterday, Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015. This was a follow-up to the teaser trailer we got the day before on December 1st. On which day we saw a brief nightmare vision from, I assume, Batman's nightmares where Superman had conquered Earth and was unmasking the Batman. And now we get the full trailer. Uh, and it's very different from the trailer we got before. And it shows a whole lot more. And uh, a whole lot has been revealed. And wow, rumors have been resurrected and have come to fruition quite surprisingly, which is... Excuse me, uh, quite honestly, what I did not think was going to happen, but lo and behold, here it is. Uh, skipping over a lot of the formalities, the uh, fact that a lot of the same conflict is just being reestablished. Let's just get to the big one here, the elephant in the room. Doomsday is going to be in Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. If you haven't heard me the first time, Doomsday... The Bane of Superman is going to be in Batman vs. Superman. And as the trailer clearly draws out to you, he will be a product of the Lex Corporation, thanks to Zod's DNA. Luthor will create him, and then they'll have an all-out brawl where Wonder Woman will come in and save Batman and Superman from this threat. And then I'm guessing all three of them will team up on Doomsday. Now let me say this first and foremost, I love this motherfucking trailer, fucking loved it, fucking loved the unholy shit out of this fucking trailer, it was fucking fantastic, my god, whoa. However, it brings up a few questions for me, because I'm not going to say that you know, Doomsday is the end-all, be-all of villains in DC. Although he is, without a doubt, one of the strongest villains in the fucking DC universe. This is the man who killed, quote-unquote, Superman. And I say this because of the fact, and right now I'll say this, I'm really late. Forgive my freaking, you know, clearly I just got up studying for mid studying for final exams but watch trailer look that I have right now but uh it's just interesting to note the fact that they're bringing him out right at the beginning of the freaking universe because okay for those who don't know and that includes myself who had to go look this up because I still haven't read the comic itself but I watched the Doomsday uh, Death of Superman movie for those who don't know Doomsday's origin is very freaking complicated and long in that actual comic book. In the comic book, The Death of Superman, Doomsday's origin is thus. He is a freaking biological weapon that was being made by the Kryptonians way before Jor-El or Kal-El, before long before the destruction of Krypton. And the basic experiment was thus to make a creature who Every time he was killed, he would regenerate and then learn from his past mistakes to kill whatever killed him and then thus become stronger. And this experiment over the millions of years was repeated again and again and again to finally Doomsday was this all-powerful fucking creature and then Krypton was destroyed and once again, like I said, I don't know the full story, but blank to blank somehow, I believe Krypton was destroyed or maybe even before that, he ended up on Earth imprisoned, and then LexCorp digs him up many, many thousands of years later. He awakens and unleashes Armageddon on Earth, basically kicking every Justice League member's ass and finally fighting Superman, in which Superman is supposedly killed, but if you read the uh, Superman comic, Death Superman, or watch the movie Superman Doomsday, Superman, of course, does not die in that comic. He's merely momentarily stopped. I'm not criticizing. That's pretty much every freaking comic these days. You know, the villain is never, I mean, the hero is never really dead. They just, you know, are in hibernation for a little bit and they come back through whatever means, you know, whether it be a, a coma, not death, or actual death, someone get brought back to life. 
it's a trope in comic books that heroes never really die. With that said, though, to me, uh, let me say this, because the rumor of Doomsday being in this movie was brought up many, many, many months ago, perhaps even years ago, Doomsday was going to be in this movie, and I laughed it off. I said, no way. I mean, come on, he's one of the... I, once again, I'm not going to say an arch-villain, because that term belongs more to someone like Doomsday. I mean, not Doomsday, I mean uh, Dark Side or even the Joker is, Dooms is like an arch enemy of the Justice League itself. Not so much Doomsday, who was just kind of an arch enemy for you know Superman on his own, and he kicks the shit out of him, but someone... You know, he's not like a super hyper-intelligent enemy. He was kind of just a wild animal that they had to deal with one time, and they beat him. Oh, no lie, he does come back a few times. Still, all the same, you know, he's not on the same level as a, an actual movie villain who was worthy of a full feature film. Which is why I assume why they're tossing him in here at the, I'm assuming at the climax of this movie. That being said, I'm so confused as to why they would throw him right out there. I mean, because to me, I we all knew something was going to come of the whole Zod head in the body bag. However, I thought it was going to be like the Superman animated series and the comics that Lex Luthor would take this sample of Clark Kent, or in this case, Zod, and then turn it into Bizarro. For those of you who don't know, and shame on you, goddammit, Bizarro is the, I hate to say it, the, I guess the evil clone, or not specifically evil, but he's a clone of Superman who was not perfected, so therefore he's really odd, and he has mostly the opposite of Superman's powers. He has a I believe he has ice beams and a fire breath, but most everything else, super speed, flight, super strength, those are all still there. He's basically this deformed clone of Superman slash Kal-El, and they constantly fight. That's what I thought was going to come of this, you know, Bizarro would make a lot of sense. But for Lex Luthor to make Doomsday is uh, unfathomable. I mean, what the hell? In order to make something like as powerful as Doomsday, you would need to infuse something else in there besides just good old Kal-El, I mean, Zod DNA. What else went into this creature to make us powerful as freaking Doomsday? It's a nerd question, a nerd question needs to definitely get asked. I mean, just how did you do this, sir? How did you freaking do it? I got to know, but the trailer, beyond my criticism of that, I mean, it looks awesome. The fight looks like it should be good. But like I'm saying, I just gotta know how did he do it. So we'll see. The answer will be questioned in March of 2016, which is etching closer, you know, by the minute, really. That being said, what I think of Doomsday's looks, and I've heard people <laughs> already posting these very hilarious memes saying that this Doomsday looks like Abomination from The Incredible Hulk, the 2008 film, and Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fucked and had a baby and made this version of Abomination, which, god damn it, it's fucking true. <laughs> it does look that way, but you know what, it's Abomination, I don't think it look too much different. Uh, the one thing I guess I did expect a little more, I guess more of the bone armor, because look at the comics, and even the versions we've seen in TV shows and movies, uh, Doomsday usually has long white hair to show how old he is, and regardless if he talks or not, he looks very fearsome, and of course he has little bone armor, you know, he's evolved through combat so many times, he has little bone weapons on his elbows and back specifically, that are supposed to protect him from being, you know, vulnerable. 